Hey everybody, it's Pastor Jared here at Ridge United Methodist Church coming at you with this week's Teaching Tuesday. Uh, every Tuesday during the lunch hour, I try to upload these short 10 to 15 minute videos to give you something to chew on or think about as you go about your day. Uh, today, I realized that I am a little bit later than I had planned. Uh, it's been a lot of fun this morning, keeping busy and uh, just completely lost track of time. But I want to talk to you today about a conversation that we began on Sunday. If you have been tuning in or if you are new to our church or to this channel, uh, we have just started a new series for the month of September about reconnecting. Uh, fall is a great time to reconnect with our lives, to hit that reset button. And so we are doing that as we kind of leave the summer weather in the summer months, summer season, and start nestling into the rhythms of fall. We are being challenged then to reset and reconnect, to reconnect with ourselves, to reconnect with God, to reconnect with one another. It's a way that we are trying to live out the greatest commandments that Jesus, out of all of the teachings and all of the commandments in the scriptures, Jesus says the two most important ones are to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, there's one passage where Jesus just says, you know, the way you really live this out is just by loving one another. And that's a great challenge, a great uh, a great thing for us to think about. So yes, hey, Kathy, I see, I see a couple comments coming in live. Uh, I want to reiterate what we had talked about, a way that we could reconnect with ourselves. This Sunday, we'll talk about reconnecting with God, and then we'll talk about reconnecting with one another. But I want to keep challenging us to reconnect with ourselves. And there was a portion in the sermon that talked about how Jesus models so well for us so many of the simple and overlooked rhythms that you and I would do well to emulate and practice in our lives. In fact, one of the things that kind of caught me off guard was the ways that God's Spirit brought to our attention that of all the words that could have been included in the scripture and all the stories that were left out that were not included. I mean, the Gospel of Luke says that the whole world could have been filled with books written about the life of Jesus while he was on earth. But instead, we just have the few short volumes that we have. We wish we could have more detail, but we get what we get. And one of the things that amazes me are the details that are included about the normal things that Jesus did, like eating so often with friends, with enemies, with family, with people that he knew and didn't know. Jesus regularly ate and he ate with people. Even after he is resurrected from the dead, Jesus still eats. You know, my dad always used to say, half joking, that his best dream for heaven is that it includes a football field on one side and a never-ending buffet table on the other. I like the, my dad's picture of heaven in part because Jesus spent so much time eating with other people. So I want to challenge you as you think about reconnecting with God, with others, with yourself this fall, make it a practice to eat with someone again. Uh, even if you can do it outside in the safety of more open air or spaced distances, some of you are doing that really well of hosting backyard gatherings and small groups and spreading out on your porches, grilling out, whatever it might look like for you, eat with a friend around a table, slow down, don't rush through, don't eat just to either celebrate or to um, digest your feelings. I'm an emotional eater. When things are going well, I want to celebrate with a pizza. When things are going bad, I want to drown my sorrows with a pizza. <laughs> so, so instead of using it as a vice, let's eat in more virtuous ways of, of eating well and eating with others. This is just a way to reconnect. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's just a way that we can actually reconnect with ourselves and emulate Jesus. The other thing that is included often in the descriptions of what Jesus has done are the many times that Jesus gets away to pray. 
Jesus was, is a Jew, and his regular practice was to join other Jews on the Sabbath day in the temple, in holy spaces, to commune with them, to withdraw weekly and regularly, to be with fellow believers and followers of Yahweh. And also, Jesus would often divert daily to get away and to pray, to just spend some quiet time with God. And I wonder when the last time was that you just took a deep breath, turned off your TV or even your music and sat in stillness and quiet and talked with God. Sometimes we make prayer more difficult than it really is. It can be as simple as telling God about your day what you're happy about, what you're worried about, what you're grateful for, what you're anxious over. Just a way to talk and have a conversation with God. Maybe even listen a little bit, reading the Bible, to listen to God speaking to you through the words of Scripture. Jesus ate with friends. Jesus prayed regularly. Jesus took naps. There's, there's a picture... I, 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 my, my favorite thing is that of all the stories of Jesus, they actually include the times when he like falls asleep on a boat ride. <laughs> I just think that is wonderful. My sister and brother-in-law recently bought a boat. They live across the street from a lake in Northern Indiana and we get to go out with them this summer. And I was like, my goodness, this is so relaxing and wonderful and also a lot of fun. I can see Jesus taking a nap on a boat while he's crossing, even when it's raging seas, Jesus slept. When's the last time you've had a good night's sleep? We think about so much. We worry about so much. We overwork ourselves. We get so caught up. And man, I love like God in the very beginning of creation and the opening chapters of the Bible. Even God rests. It's not a day off. God created into the fabric of the world times and rhythms to relax, to rest, to be thankful. When's the last time you took a good nap or had a good night's sleep? It's difficult to do. I, I know. But these are three of the rhythms that are included in the life of Jesus as he reconnected with himself. Maybe we could try those three. Then there's one more. <laughs> this, if you just watch YouTube videos of how to draw things, this is where I get my pictures from. But I, I, I would like for you to read a, a gospel account. This is I'm, I'm starting today. I, I confess that we we're a couple of days in. I haven't started my homework yet. Uh, but I've got the the Gospel of Mark because it's the shortest gospel. I've got it marked in my Bible. And I'm going to start this afternoon of just marking the times when Jesus eats with friends, prays, sleeps, and then goes for walks. I mean, how many times is Jesus walking between towns or cities? And he's rarely doing, if ever so, alone. He always has his friends, his followers, his disciples walking along with him. And we rarely get the details of the conversations that they have between towns, but sometimes we get little insights. All the while, Jesus is going for walks. I mean, this is just part of not only the ways that they lived, but like was what, what he did. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I got this, this step counter now on, on, my, on, my, on my watch. Uh, it's part of our insurance plans. We, we count our steps. It's like the best thing that I've had the last eight years because I'm realizing, my goodness, I live a very sedentary lifestyle. Often, Often I'm sitting in front of a computer or, or talking with people, sitting down. I, I got to be intentional to get my steps in. This seems trivial or maybe even like just an exercise thing, but it's, it's also a way that we can emulate Jesus and get into more natural, healthier rhythms of reconnecting. This isn't a self-help thing so much as it is a human thing. And that's a wonderful, good thing. The Bible talks a lot about how we should live as humans and that abundant life that Jesus offers. Well, here are four ways we can lean into the abundance of Christ. Eating well with friends with new friends, with not yet friends, praying regularly, diverting daily, withdrawing weekly, to be intentional about having a conversation with the God who loves us and doesn't judge us either. I love that. It's, not, it's never a tisk tisk. It's never a shame on you. That's never God's voice. It's always a conversation. Uh, sleeping well, taking a nap, 
um, going to bed early, turning off your devices. I mean, these are just helpful, practical ways, but they're also ways that we can emulate Jesus. And then finally, whoop, it's the going for walks. Uh, and I'll tell you, friends, this is a great time to do it. It is beautiful outside. This week is gorgeous. I love the fall. I love wearing my flannel shirts. I love getting out my sweatshirts and going for walks outside. When's the last time you went for a walk? These are four simple, easy ways that you can reconnect with yourself. And in so doing, you're actually going to be surprised to discover that you're going to reconnect with God. Jesus did these four things regularly. Take a look in one of the Gospels and mark them down every time you come across them. But also try practicing them in your life. I look forward to hearing how God speaks to you and renews your soul in these four simple practices. Eating, eating with friends, <laughs> praying regularly, taking naps or a good night's sleep, and then going for walks. I'm going to go do that now. I'm going to go grab something to eat, go for a walk. Not take a nap, though, but I'll say a prayer. Have a great day. Be blessed to be a blessing in this world, and continue pressing on. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.